Uh, okay, so, um, listen, uh, I already did a video about this, uh, not one that I shared with you guys, because it sucked, so I'm gonna try to do it again, I am watching the clock up here in the corner, which you guys can't see, uh, so only I can see that, because I'm recording the video right now, you're not gonna see it when I post the video, so anyway, um, one of my, uh, subscribers was asking a question about, um, if Sierra England is the best way to get your CDL, and then we kind of got into a little bit of a conversation on the comments, and they were asking if it was also uh, what I meant by fail. So I was wanting to address uh, those two questions real quick, and I just thought a video would be the better way to do it. So um, the first question I wanted to address was, uh, number one, um, is, uh, is Sierra England the best way to get your CDL? Uh, Sierra England, Swift, Prime, uh, Werner, Schneider, uh, whoever is out there that's going to uh, take you in and they're going to train you and uh, try to give you your CDL, is that the best way to go? Well, the answer to that is really no, it's not really the best way to go. Um, I call these companies driver mill companies. Um, I think I've heard the term somewhere else before, uh, but that's the term that I use. So, um, the driver mill companies tend to, they're really kind of focused on like three things, okay? And uh, that is get you into the company, get you trained, and get you in a truck. Because until you're in a truck, you're not making them any money. They're not making any money off of you at all. So it's get you through these two things the, as quick as possible and get you in a truck so you can be making the money. That's how they get their money, okay? Uh, if you go to a vocational school, that is specifically set up uh, to teach you how to drive a truck. It's sort of kind of the same thing. Um, the idea is to get you trained, get you in, get you trained, and get you in a truck. But the getting you in a truck is more for your benefit and less for the company's benefit. Um, their their focus is more on getting you trained. Uh, getting you in, getting you trained, and a high turnover for them is good because they can make more money. Uh, a community college, uh, some community colleges do truck driver training. Uh, Mountain View in Dallas, I think, does it. Uh, there is a college in Coppers Cove or Colleen that also does it, but I think they are sponsored by Stevens Transport. So, um, but anyway, uh, the deal with those companies is uh, we're going to a community college. They're not really so much. It doesn't really matter. Getting you in and getting money is is good. Getting you trained is the main focus. Getting you in a truck is kind of whatever happens when you finish with your training. So, um, that's kind of, of how that works. Is it the best way to do it, going to a driver mill company? Uh, it's, it's the faster way to do it. It's, it's the quicker way to do it. Um, and that's because they're going, they're gonna, you've got a job. If they're training you, you've already got a job lined up. When you get done doing the first two things, you, you're gonna be in a truck. That's the thing. But when you get in the truck, you're gonna be stuck as far as a contract is concerned. A year, two years... Uh, for me, when I did it with Sierra England, it was nine months. So, um, just kind of keep that in mind uh, as far as that's concerned. The second part, or the second question that was uh, concerned, we got to talking about um, how driver mill companies, if you fail, they can kind of they can kind of eat that. You know, uh, they can handle it a little bit better than uh, than other companies. And uh, Mahadara was the one that asked. Um, what do you mean by fail? Well, uh, and this is where I think the other video kind of tanked because I kind of focused on truck driving as a lifestyle and it is a lifestyle. That's the thing. So I think that's one part of it. Well, what do I mean by fail? Well, well I mean kind of a couple of different things, you know, uh, you know, you could go through training, you can get through training. You could be one of those people that has trouble with training. Uh, trying to get, you know, trying to learn how to back up, trying to learn how to shift gears, trying to learn how to uh, not, you know, to turn wide or whatever. Um, you may have trained during the summer and I'm not and are not used to the grass, you know, to the ice on the road in the winter time. You know, um, a mom and pop place. So let's say you go through a vocational school or you go through a community college um, or you go through one of those like, uh, like I'll I'll help you get your CDL. You know, where you do all the studying yourself. And, then they just kind of take you out and let you drive around in a truck. Um, if you if you did that and then you now you're looking for a job, you know you had the six thousand dollars to pay for the, the classes. Now you get to go look for a job. Well, mom and a pop place, um, they don't have the ability to swallow a mistake as easily as 
like Sierra England does, or Swift, or Prime, or, you know, Schneider, Warner, or Stevens Transport, okay? Um, a mom and pop place that's running 20 trucks, if you take one of their trucks, if their company, if they're uh, a company, or you're driving a company truck, and you take one of their trucks, and you hit a patch of ice, and you roll that truck into the ditch upside down, um, that's really going to hurt a company that has 20 trucks. If you work for Sierra England and you take a truck and you hit a patch of ice, you roll the truck upside down um, in the ditch. Well, they, they've got 6,500 trucks. And 6,500 trucks, is not, they're not really going to feel it. you know. And that's kind of why uh, why it's better, sort of, to go with the driver remote company. you know, Because you can make multiple mistakes and actually learn something and they might, may not let you go, but a mom and pop place, you make one mistake that costs them money and they're probably going to cut you loose. Um, so in that way, it could kind of be better. But that's that's kind of part of what I mean, you know. Um, people, when they're first doing this, can drop a trailer and damage a trailer. I did that. Um, they can uh, they can roll a truck. I never did that. Uh, they can hit a car, park a car. They can do all kinds of stuff um, as far as, you know, failing is concerned. And when you are, you know, there are things that even the big driver mill companies are going to go like, you know, sayonara, you're out of here, buddy. Because we're not going to put up with that crap. But there's still, there's a lot more that you can do to, in making a mistake as far as the big driver mill company is concerned. You can't do it with a mom and pop. So that's part of what I mean by fail. Well, the other thing I mean by fail is people who come out here and think that this is a 9 to 5 job. Uh, I'm going to be able to work during the day only and, and, and drive when I want to. And and uh, and that just that's just not how it happens. And... A perfect example for me was was last Monday. Um, I got in my. I woke up at seven in the morning. I got in my car. I drove. I got the cat and the dog together. I got all the stuff together I needed to take with me. I drove down to where my truck is, to where I keep it stored when I'm not in it, and that was about an hour away. So now it's like I think I left the house at seven thirty. Now it's eight thirty. So now at eight thirty, I get in my truck. I do my pre-trip. I you know I drive up to the, the yard in Fort Worth, and that's another 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes to get back to the yard. That's like 40 minutes to get back to the yard. So now it's, what, 8, 30, 9, 20, right? My trailer's loaded, so I got to hook up to the trailer uh, and then take off. So 9.30, I'm hooked up to the trailer. By, by you know, 9.30, I'm on the road going to where I need to drop off. So I go all the way over to where I need to drop off, which I can't remember for the life of me where that was now. And, um, and wait the two hours or hour to get unloaded or whatever. And then I drive all the way back to the yard, drop the trailer off. Um, and it's now about like 12.30. And then go to, to the office to drop off the paperwork. And then ended up turning around, going back to uh, the yard, picking up the trailer. And going to Carrollton, Texas to pick up another load. So I get to Carrollton, Texas about 2.45. They had me loaded by 3.45, so now it's 4 o'clock. So I got up at 7.00. And I've gone all through, all the way through my day, and it's now four o'clock. Well, most people in any other industry at four o'clock are like, okay, that's in, that's enough, that's the amount of work I can get done today, so I'm going to go home. But trucking is different because now at four o'clock, I still had to go. So I had to be in Salt Lake City on Wednesday. I had to do something, so I had to drive. So I ended up driving um, from Salt Lake City or from Carrollton to to Amarillo, which was an additional five hours. So my day started at 7, and by the time my day was done, it was 7 in the morning, by the time my day was done, it was 9 p.m. in the evening. So that's that's kind of what I mean by that. You get a lot of people who come out here like, oh, I'm only going to drive during the day. I'm never going to drive at night. And, and uh, I only work, I don't work weekends. I only work 9 to 5, and, you know. And you don't get that, or they don't communicate well enough to uh, let their dispatcher know that they're empty. Um, they don't communicate with what's going on, you know. Why are you still sitting at the shipper? Why haven't you moved yet? Oh, I, didn't, I didn't bother to ask. You know, you gotta you gotta kind of stay on top of things. And you get people in in the industry that they don't get that. You know, um, I always try to tell people that that trucking is a lifestyle, and uh, unless you can understand that, unless you're going in and sitting down uh, at the Petro and chit chatting with the other people at the Petro, the other truck drivers, at the Petro talking about. You know this happening and that happening and stories and getting advice um if you're not on facebook you know looking at all the different pages 
you know, on Facebook where you can get information about news, keeping up with what the FMCSA is doing, keeping up with, with what the Department of Transportation is doing, keeping up with the, the uh, trucks, the automated truck situation, keeping up with all that stuff. You're not going to succeed in this business. This is not a 9 to 5 Monday through Friday job. This is a, you go out, it's like being a farmer. You know, farmers don't have 9 to 5 Monday through Friday jobs. They go out and they work until the work is done. And they got to get this much work done. And it doesn't matter how many hours it's going to take to get that much work done. They got to get this much work done. And if that takes all day, 24 hours, then it's going to, they're going to work 24 hours. Okay. And that's the thing. There's no, like, I'm going to work up to this point, And if this is how much work I get done, this is how much work I get done. You got to, you got to work until the, until the work is done or until you can't legally work anymore. And, uh, and that's how it works. So, um, Mahadara, I hope that, that, uh, kind of helped explain things, what I mean by fail. Um, but just keep in mind, you know, uh, and I've said this before and I'm going to say it again and I'll say it again and again and again. You have to keep these things in mind. You have to work, be willing to do the work. You're never going to succeed in this business unless you're not. And, and that's the one thing I want everybody to know. Um, you know, it's, it's life itself is going to be nothing but work. And it doesn't matter, like, on your days off, you know, you want to, you know, chill and not do anything and, and just kind of sit around the house and maybe drink beer or watch TV or play video games or, or, or whatever. But at some point, you still got to do laundry. You're still going to have to do the dishes. You're still going to have to take out the trash. You're still going to have to sweep the floor. You're still going to have to pay the bills. So, um, it sucks, but if we want the stuff we want, we're going to work till the day we die. And trucking is just kind of an exaggeration of that. You just, you're going to work. You're going to work all, your, your ass off. Well, not, not your ass off, because mine's still freaking huge. But, um, but you're going to work, and it's going to be, you know, 12 or 14 hour days on a regular basis. And that's something you have to be willing to do. So, anyway, that's it. You guys know the drill. Keep your shiny side up. See you guys down the road.